What's going on, Squirrel Squad? I literally just uh, minimized my browser down from recording a different video for the other side of Squirrel, one of the National Anthem videos. And this was sitting in my feed, um, like in the suggested feed. This is Stuart Lee on James Corden. I don't know if this is good or bad. I don't know if it's, you know, a piss take. I have no idea. But uh, judging by the reaction from a lot of folks when I did the James Gordon, the Corden videos, uh, why not mix James Corden with a guy who I got great reaction from and everyone said they loved, which is Stuart Lee. So let's see what Stuart Lee has to say about James Corden. If it's your first time here, hit the subscription button. We do comedy reactions, culture reactions, all kinds of things. Hang out. Enjoy yourself. Where you been? No, James Corden's there. Do you know him, James Corden? You know, I don't know James Corden personally, right, but he's always going on in interviews about how brilliant he thinks I am, right? And the feeling is not reciprocated. <laughs> Britain's loss is America's loss also. <laughs> he's there clapping away, James Corden. Honestly, if you Google James Corden and my name, you find all these interviews, you know, there's people going to him, What's your favourite thing? And he goes, oh, Stuart Lee's brilliant, you know. I'm trying to make out he's clever. <laughs> Imagine James Corden watching me. Like a dog listening to classical music. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? Lie. PR bullshit. <laughs> There's quite a few um, specific names that crop up in in, in the show, you know, um, uh, sort of other comedians and uh, people in, from the, uh, you know, coterie of showbiz so mates good. that um, y you profess not to have. And you, you, <laughs> you despise, um, I, I don't know if you mentioned it, spo I've already, spoiler alert, and given away that it starts with some shuffling papers, but um, you, you despise someone else who's famous who's uh, just gone to work in America for liking you. <laughs> Now, what happens if you meet these people then? Or, well, do, you you know, what, or right. do you not? Okay. <laughs> right. It, you're talking about James Corden. You're talking you? about James yeah. Corden. Okay. James <laughs> Corden has been. Re Don't want James Corden, aren't you? Because I can't think of anybody else who went to work in the United States who I despise. Repeatedly very nice about. I don't know him, right? He's been no. repeatedly very nice about me in interviews. And uh, and he's always saying how great he thinks I am. And people have sent me emails he's sent to them that people work in the business, you know, saying. Yeah. And um, so. How dare he talk about how good you are, that son of a bitch. <laughs> but obviously the funniest thing to do, I'm sure he is very nice, right? And I, the funniest thing I think to by do... His, the funny thing about James Corden is, actually, by his own admission, he wasn't very nice when he became successful. Okay, and well, he sort of, he, he, I think he realises he was a monster and kind of drew back from that. Last time way, he was on know, the show, he was nice, anyway. The funniest thing to do is to be annoyed about it yeah. and to tell and to say he's not fit to come and see me. And so, but that's been <laughs> awkward because I had this sort of idea for this bit. And I've been doing loads and loads of gigs, like, all over the place. Yeah. Um, in, like, theatres and big clubs and also little places. And I was doing one in a little club in, in uh, North London, downstairs at the King's Head, uh, Britain's longest-running comedy club at the King's Head in Crouch End. Right. And, uh, you know, and I saw he was in there, and he was sort of, he was sort of sitting um, on this stool, kind of in this corridor by the dressing room. And I had to, but I didn't want to talk to him because I'd already had this idea to do this bit. Right. I went 20 minutes on him liking me and I didn't want to have to meet him and yeah. spoil it. So I had to kind of, I had to kind of sneak around the back of him and, <laughs> and I had to wait till he was looking the other way and... Sneaking by James Corden just so you don't have to talk to the son of a bitch. <laughs> I didn't want to have to, have to meet him, you know. Then I, so it's sort of things like things like that. But I, I, look, I think he'll find it's funny. I think he'll think it's funny because, the, 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 you know, he can see... You can see if he's thought about it that the funniest thing to do, when 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 endorsed by a transatlantically successful celebrity, is to react with with disgust and horror to it. <laughs> you know that's the funniest thing to do. And you know, I probably won't horror. meet him though because I don't go to any of those no. things. You know, I don't. I mean, I can't now anyway. I don't. Go, I don't. You know, I I don't go. I partly don't go to things because I I don't like them. But also, I kind of think. You know, you write about what you know, and you do jokes about what you know, and increasingly, it's it's 25, it's more than a quarter of a century since I did a day job, and my world now is thinking about comedy and comedians and things, so I partly write about that because it's what I think about, and that's what yeah. I find funny. Yeah. yeah. How much career suicide would it be for you to admit 
that James Corden understands your work better than 90% of your audience. What? Oh, my fucking God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Career suicide for sure. You would drive away your audience. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know him. I don't know think about him. He's a co professional comedian. Well, he's not. He's an actor, isn't he? <laughs> He Is still he? does comedy. Does he? I don't know. I don't really know. I've never really seen it. I've seen him. I mean, it's a very funny bit. I don't really like a dog listening to classical I don't really music. know anything about it. The, the, the other thing is, right, okay, I don't really know anything about him, but it seems, it seems funny to be ungrateful for someone's support. That's the main thing about that. It's not really about who he is or what he is. <laughs> True. It seems it seems funny to be ungrateful for someone's support, and I, I have I, and I have that. this done to me all the time, right? By a lot of the sorts of artists that I go, oh, they're brilliant. I then find they've improvised a song slagging me off or something. You know, it happens to me all the time. I understand it. It's because it's because they're slagging you off, and then they're making fun of you. Yeah, well, it's but both, but it's it's also because that person who is me. It's that Groucho Club thing. If he wouldn't want to belong to a club that would have him as a member, and it's partly about low self-esteem as well and like self-doubt. Um, so, the thing about hearing that James Corden was keen and knowing that he comes to gigs and stuff <laughs> is sort of—it's like burning his bridges. It's like he's—it's a sort of self-loathing and a kind of fear of uh, the responsibility of being popular with taste makers and things okay, like that. You I'm know, so push you hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. How much of a career suicide would it be yeah. for you to admit that a man that works in comedy understands well, he what may do, but do I don't know what better than ninety percent of your audience. He probably may do, but I don't know I don't know him, I don't know what he thinks. Of course you know. he does. Well he, you know, he appears in the sun with a England flag painted on his face. <laughs> so it's sort of I'm I don't know fan. I don't I don't know anything about him. He's I don't, never made me laugh. I don't have any opinion about him. He seems, I'm He's sure, doing you know, karaoke in a car with pop stars. He yeah, I don't, seems yeah. you know, I don't know. I don't know you know, I don't I don't like so, well, it's funny. Like someone, I did a bit in this new series about um, looking at Matthew Broderick through a crack in a door in a <laughs> Hollywood hotel when he was on his own in a room oh, where, yeah. he, where he was supposed to be doing interviews about being Inspector Gadget, and that was a really sad thing to see. And I read a review saying that I had this gift for like picking on f amusingly obscure people, and what a <laughs> clever thing to know Matthew Broderick was right on the fringes. But actually, that is just something that happened. I did see that happen with life Matthew right, Broderick. Yeah. So you and pick a persona, so life writes the rest. Well, life writes the rest. So it's sort of. You know, it was uh, something funny about James Corden. I think in a, in it, he's like gone to America and is a big chat show host over there. And you, you, you know, you kind of like Americans have heard of him, and he's our export well, and our ambassador. So it seems it seems funny about that. But I don't have any personal opinion about did it. You know, I went to Monday night the other night right. the wrestling. Yeah, and they always try and get like a local English celebrity. Mm. And in the front row, all they could get for Monday Night Raw was James Corden's parents. <laughs> Well, well, and yeah. you can imagine yeah. the room booed him out of the building. Well, booed him out of the building. He know. booed someone's parents. <laughs> well, <that's, you> know, <laughs> I think they would probably understand why that was funny. You know, oh. it's it is in, in, in a in that when, when, situation. When uh, there we go. That's the end of it right there. It's the, the line is full. It's getting ready to just chop me off. Seven or nine or seven or nine. I stopped that sucker at. Um, boy, uh, that's uh, a little more unflattery. Um, someone else who wasn't very flattering to Mr. Corden. Uh, so funny. He tells everybody that Stuart Lee is his favorite. Then Stuart Lee is like, you know, piss off. <laughs> I love how he was just like, it's, I think it's like my responsibility to, to treat him this way. That's pretty good. Uh, Stuart, I hope you and James make up someday and grab lunch. You know, maybe, uh, maybe he'll take you around around in the car and you can sing with him. Who knows, right? I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is a little, uh, probably a more uh, relaxed and laid back piece of Stuart Lee's. I'm going to get into his comedy as we continue on down the road. But uh, when I saw the two names, James Gordon and Stuart Lee, I had to at least take a look at it and share it with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you soon. Be good to each other. Scroll out. Mm -hmm.